Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, another episode. I think we call it an episode, maybe an adventure sometimes, maybe just a little bit of radio rambling. I'm Stan Houston. Uh, hopefully some interesting ideas that will help you have a little greater insight, maybe some greater influence, make an impact in the marketplace, and have good stuff, good income. And income is not just money. There are a lot of good incomes that could come to you if you're an interesting person and if you are interested in the well-being of others. And we try and do that from time to time. Interesting ideas. Someone told me today, and I think that someone was my wife, who said, did you know that today is National Face Your Fears Day? I didn't know that. Of course, there are all kinds of days that come and go. Uh, Face Your Fears Day, and that got me thinking, perhaps I should talk a little bit about that. Since I've written a great deal about it, but I'm not going to do it today, I think I'll probably do it maybe tomorrow if that works out for you on a Wednesday. Because today I already thought about something that uh, made a lot of sense to me, and I'd like to share it with you, hopefully. It's about... Maybe you are one of those persons. Have you ever worked the night shift? The night shift. Well, I have some night shift stories to share with you. And then maybe a, a little flip to it about the, the kind of things that life is dealing to us all right now. I'm Stan Houston. The program is Interesting Ideas. 15 to 20 minutes of conversation, connection, and hopefully you'll even Come online and talk back. And the program begins right now. And thank you for deciding to stay around. Yes, face your fears. Uh, chapter one in my book, uh, my first book, is called Fear Kills Everything. Fear kills everything, and I think perhaps I'll read a small section of that to you tomorrow. Um, wouldn't it be nice to be fearless? I mean, you have less fear in your life. Someone I know was almost described not only as fearless, but fearless. They really had no fears that anyone could ever see or even believe. I don't know if that was true of the person, but they were a remarkable personality, a remarkable good person, and uh, they had a lot of strength and character, and uh, I can believe that uh, he was fearless, particularly as he got older, <laughs> and there's something about growing older. You have less fear. You can. Uh, however, uh, if you do it wrong, you can have a lot more fear, and that might be the subject we're talking about. But uh, I was thinking about all of the things I've done, and then the word came to me because someone actually mentioned that uh, they were going to work the night shift. And uh, that wasn't what they wanted, but that was the opportunity they had, so they decided to take it. And then I said, hmm, I wonder what that would be like again. Well, let me tell you because I know a few things about that, all right? Let me try and share them with you if I can. When I went to college, I was uh, pursuing many things. Uh, I, unfortunately, an education wasn't always the top priority, but because I didn't have a lot of money, I actually had to go out and find work. I, I remember getting through the first semester, and uh, I was running out of money, and uh, I hadn't worked the first semester, but then as I looked at my situation, I knew that if I was going to go through the second semester, I had to go out and find a job. And um, I was able to find a job based on the fact that I had been a, uh, a mentor of a, a man who was one of the top managers of the J.C. Penney Company store in my local little town of Marshalltown, Iowa. And uh, his name was Charles, and uh, he was very well known throughout the company. He was a close personal friend of um, J.C. Penney himself. 
And so uh, he was the one who kind of recruited me as a young man. He wanted to make me into a penny man. That was where, you know, you try and find a young man and uh, bring them up. And then, of course, they go into the business, too. And uh, you gather a following of uh, young men. And pretty soon, uh, it wasn't at that time, though, uh, of women who uh, owed something to you in terms of the business. And, of course, that's the way the business should run. And so he had recruited me to do that. But now I had left there, and I was in college in St. Paul. But I went down to the penny store, and I started to fill out an application. And the uh, woman uh, who took out the application said, well, have you ever done anything like this before? And I said, well, yeah, I, I worked at the penny store in Marshalltown, Iowa, and I, I worked for a man named Charles Helms. All of a sudden... I heard a commotion in the manager's office, and he came out and said, Young man, did, did you work for Charles Helms? And I said, Yeah, I did. He said, Young man, when do you want to start? Now, that says something. <laughs> that says something. And uh, that's what happened. I, I got the job right away. In fact, since I was dressed appropriately, he actually sent me up to the shoe department and said, Start selling shoes. That's what you do. Uh, let's see if you do it well. And, of course, I did because that's what I do. <laughs> that's what I did. Selling shoes is a great experience for growing up. Let me tell you, you learn so much in trying to learn how to sell shoes. But I had other jobs that came up. Uh, and I don't know now how they all fit together at one time. But then we found out that... Um, there was a company called Control Data. Now, you have not heard of them, perhaps, unless you're quite old, because it was one of the top competitors to IBM for a while in the super, super, super computer, and they were located just uh, also in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, and they literally went worldwide. They were primarily involved in the kind of computers that were needed in the space program. And they had a possibility, they told college kids, if you can come to work at 8 o'clock at night and work till midnight, uh, half time, uh, uh, 20 hours a week, and uh, they had some good wages. Now, of course, the wages they were paying was a lot less than their full-time employees, but it was certainly much better than those of us who were ordinary college kids would do. I did that for a while. That was, you know, here you put in a full day, try to study, and then get in your car, and it's cold, and you drive all the way up to the computer uh, uh, firm and... Uh, work four, four and a half hours, and then it's way past midnight, and then you have to get home and try and hopefully get something to eat and try and get to bed because you've got classes in the morning. Now, that sh night shift was something else. Now, then I also had a night shift where, I don't know why I found this out, but there was a place, a hamburger joint that was uh, 24 hours, and literally, that's what it was. It's 24 hours. It was a small one. And uh, they were looking for somebody to clean up. And the way it worked out, of course, is that they really had a rush in business when the bars closed. And that was 1 o'clock. And so they wanted somebody to come in at 2.30 in the morning and spend an hour and a half cleaning up the place. And do that. I did that. I don't know how long I did that, but there I was, you know, getting up again, cold, uh, walking. I didn't have my car at that time, so I walked uh, uh, was a four or five blocks, and uh, I would then mop and clean up the place and get all the garbage out, and uh, then four o'clock, go back and try to get a little bit of sleep before I had to get up and go to class again. So maybe the uh, college record that I have <laughs> is a somewhat of a reflection of that was kind of the way I kind of lived my life. Well, then I got involved uh, after my teaching experience in radio, and uh, that was night shift work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, I don't think for the most part I 
really ever worked the regular day shift that often. Now, I did it as a part of my other job as a program director, but when I was on the air, it had to be really early in the morning, get up or in the morning, and then uh, oftentimes I had the night shift. <laughs> there it went. What about the night shift? Well, let me just simply say a couple things. First of all, if you're a night shift person, blessings on you. Because you need it. That's right. Um, it is a difficult way to have to make a living. <laughs> it really is. And what we have to do whenever we walk into the supermarket and find everything nice, first thing in the morning, everything is in place. Yeah, you know how that happened? It's because somebody worked the night shift. There is so much that happens that those of us who do the day work never appreciate because things are a lot nicer, they are cleaned up, they are ready to go for the work day because people do the night shift. I just want you to remember that because I do remember that a lot. And oftentimes uh, when I'm uh, having to do something uh, later in the evening, and I see the night shift beginning to come on, particularly in the grocery store, I often try and give them a word of encouragement and tell them how much I appreciate how nice uh, it makes things, that the stocks of goods are all there and they look good and the place is clean. I hope you will do that. Remember, there are lots of things that happen that are nice and good and helpful. And think nothing of the firemen, the policemen, the security people, all of those people who work the night shift. My uh, one radio program called Caribbean Night Call, which uh, literally was a midnight program, was pretty much uh, full of people who couldn't sleep or didn't get to sleep because they were working the night shift. Well, please... If you're one of them, my thanks and blessings to you. If you're not, take a moment to be a little bit more thoughtful and grateful to the people who work the night shift. I'm Stan Houston, an interesting idea, and perhaps it has a little bit of a life and spirit meaning, if you'll give me just a few minutes more. He's a dear friend of mine, been a friend for many years, and um, he uh, is going through a bad time right now. And uh, it's not something he did, it's something that has happened to him and happened to a family member. And uh, he was talking to me, and he just simply said, Stan, things are just really dark right now. They're just really dark right now. Now, this is a very accomplished man, <laughs> a man with great professional reputation and credibility and accreditation. But uh, he's not feeling all of the joy of that achievement or of those accomplishments or of that life right now. As he said, it's just really dark. And for some reason, that struck me as, you know what, <laughs> all of a sudden, it's kind of like he's on the night shift now. And then I realized that there are a number of people in my, my life, and of course I've gone through it before. You know, one of the writers of ancient scripture talked about the dark night of the soul. And most of those men and women who have made a great accomplishment, both in spiritual and professional things, will tell you that there are times when it is just really dark. Uh, when they uh, believe in God, but now they're not sure. <laughs> when they think people are good, but now they're not sure. When they think the universe can be friendly and good, and God is good, but now they're not sure. 
we all will encounter people every day who in terms of life are on the night shift. I just would ask you to try and uh, keep your mind and your awareness so that uh, you might be able to have a little better sense, even in the midst of the daytime, of the people who are living right now on the night shift. And if that uh, sense comes to you, or in the case of my friend, they just come right on and tell you, be prepared to be a little bit of light as best you can. Be a little bit of light as best you can. Right now, the world is in dark times. A lot of the world is on the night shift, and there are a lot of people who are on the night shift. And it's our responsibility as men and women who care, those who think that spirit force things are important, that we are doing all we can to help those ladies and gentlemen, those boys and girls, sometimes those lost souls who don't have that prosperity of the soul right now who are on the night shift. I'm Stan Houston. Just a thought on Tuesday. Interesting ideas. We'll be back. And we're only back to say uh, <laughs> thank you for listening. I hope you uh, can use some of these words. Hey, uh, I might be able to help you. I know in a number of ways I can at least ask some good questions, perhaps share a few night shift thoughts myself, and perhaps in some way uh, guide you to people who can be a lot smarter and more helpful than me. Our business is helping people build a better life and helping them build a better business. We do this through the podcasting business, through the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience, and through a number of uh, <laughs> ventures and adventures that we are in. But uh, you can reach me at stanhusted at gmail.com, stanhusted at gmail.com. Please be in touch with me. We could use your help and your, your recommendations and uh, your referrals. And if you want to help out with the work we do, uh, we do have a way for you to get what I call a tax-deductible tip, <laughs> uh, a donation to the work we do, particularly for the Christian Entrepreneur Network and the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience. All the best and blessings. Check me out at witradio.net if you want some radio podcast help, witradio.net. If you just want to find out more about me, you can just Google Stan Houston or Bing Stan Houston, your favorite search engine. I'm probably the only one in the world, and uh, a lot of stuff will come up, <laughs> and a lot of it's just stuff. Uh, it'll be something that might be helpful and useful to you and maybe give you a little bit more courage or reason to reach out to me. Again, stanhouston at gmail.com or just Stan Houston on your search. Always close with a benediction all the time and uh, blessings on you. And if you're particularly uh, going to be on the night shift, again, be careful. Uh, be brave and know that somebody appreciates you. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs>